Well, good morning and this Saturday, welcome to our daily prayers together. Um, now with the easing of lockdown, uh, my wife Chris and I have taken advantage of driving to see our son who's up in Leeds. We haven't seen him for ages and ages actually. And it was lovely to spend a night in Leeds with him and his wife. He's been doing up his new house. But I have to say, when we came home, we were really exhausted. I think we've got very used to being at home and not going out too much. And it was surprisingly tiring, although it was absolutely lovely to get out. I do appreciate not all of us are able to do that at the moment. But it was a real joy just to be able to see one or two more folk. We prepare ourselves as we begin to pray now. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our reading today is Matthew 6, um, picking it up at verse 2. In fact, I'll do it from verse 1. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you'll have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honoured by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not left, let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. As I was saying yesterday, the spotlight in the teaching in this part of the Sermon on the Mount is on things we would have thought were good in themselves. And so here we've got giving to the needy. Yes, of course, that's a good thing. But even within that Christian act, there is a danger. That our motivation is that others will see us do it. So Jesus warns, when you give, do not announce it. And probably you and I all know of little subtle ways. We can just let it be known that we're doing something. But actually do it secretly. The danger is, of course, I was just thinking about this a tiny bit, if in church, you know, or wherever in the Christian community, we knew what each other was giving, what would happen is we'd set up a sort of very dysfunctional competition. Oh, well, so-and-so, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, well, they've given this and look at them and look at them. And gosh, my, my giving isn't nearly good enough. But if I make it good enough, then I'll be the top of the tree. And you can just see how that can really unsettle a church giving all for the wrong reasons. So the challenge today is to do it for God and God alone. There's this beautiful the illustration that if your right hand is doing the giving, fishing into the pocket to pull out the coins and notes, you're doing it so quietly, even your left hand doesn't know what's happening. Giving is a deeply Christian thing to do to others. But Jesus says, let's be careful for our motivation for doing it. Heavenly Father, there are many areas where the needy need our money, be it locally, be it in church, be it across the world. But Father, when I do give, help me to do it with the right motivation, not to be seen and approved by others, but for you and you alone space for our prayers. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore.